I think it's very important to treat people with respect because how you treat a person sets the tone in the room and I believe when you treat a person with respect that washes off on other people and the way they treat that person. I think that everything you do sets an example for others that see you. Um, so you should not go out unless you're going to act in a civil manner. I think that, you know, especially for the young ones, they're inspired by everything they see. And so if you're going to act up, you should, you know, not go out or just be respectful of others because everybody's a leader whether or not they know it. So I think treating people with respect in public and in private settings is really important. Uh, this is especially important for people in the public sphere for really two reasons. One is which especially people like politicians need to make decisions and talk to other people with different viewpoints and you can't do that if you don't treat people with respect. The second point is that these people are people in public positions and so they act as a role model to everyone else. You know, speaking in a respectful dialogue, it's I think really the first step to uh, getting anything accomplished out of a, of a conversation. So I think really it's, uh, you can't overstate the importance of coming to a, a conversation with uh, attitude of respect and, and being civil. Um, everything, everything just follows from that. I think it's critically important to treat people with respect um, both privately and publicly because it's like the fundamental for any relationship is that you kind of respect one another and agree to kind of listen to each other and really uh, think about what the other person is saying and, and really work towards honest communications. It's important to treat others with respect because um, in the end you always want to be a great positive person and you'll be viewed as a a person with a good reputation and everybody could could remember you and look back and say that oh I remember her or him and you know it's it's good to it is important to treat each other with respect because it is how we all expect to be treated and so when we treat one another with respect uh, that's what we want in return uh, I think uh, treating people with respect is extremely important because it creates a uh, an environment where people can help each other and uh, create lasting relationships with each other. It is extremely important that people treat each other with respect. As a person that has been through some less respectful interactions to say the least, I would say it's extremely important because everybody is a human. They're exactly like you. Well, pretty much exactly like you. They might have different opinions. They might look a bit different, but they're the same person. But they're the same kind of person. They think, they feel, and it's extremely important that you respect them and that you respect their opinion. It's important for people to treat each other with respect in public and in private because respect is an inalienable right. It's something as humans that we all deserve. Publicly, it's very important to work together and keep everybody happy and keep everything kind of working like a well-oiled machine and um, privately as well I think that's very important um, it's kind of like everybody is a link in a chain and if one of them is like a weaker link then everybody kind of helps and it all works together um, respect is what really um, bonds the relationship between people if you have respect you can go really far in life in my life, I feel like people should treat each other with respect because I know from experience that being treated badly is not a lot of fun. And it's really nice to know when people are being respectful to what you believe in and what you want to do in life. And I feel like it's a great way to be kind to others and to just pay back what you might have because people might not have as much as you do. To me, it's extremely important that we all treat each other with respect. I mean, for society to get along, for people to get along with each other, I think it's important for everyone to cheat, treat each other how they would like to be treated. Well, I think it's important that people treat other people with respect as well as I treat others with respect because showing that you respect somebody also shows that you care for them and that they're that their opinions are valid to you and that you really consider them to be a good person with good values. I think it is very important to have respect for everybody. Respect is just a way you show people that 
you have love for them or that they are not, that they're important and that you, if you show them respect, it shows them that you care about them. Um, well, I think it's very important because uh, the more you treat someone with respect, I think you'll get respected back. I would say it's crucial to treat people with respect. Um, you see it happening, not happening a lot in public. To treat people with respect, especially in a public setting, would help a lot of boundaries between us. We're all humans. We all have stories behind ourselves. It's, the person next to you probably has some kind of life story that's not the same as yours. Even if the situations are similar, there are a lot of factors that go into your own life. To, to emphasize the importance of respect is just to be a better human being for the rest of the world. Like just being sensitive to other people's culture because um, there are some things that we do in our culture that are uh, deemed very disrespectful in other cultures. Like eye contact for us, that's a big thing, but in other cultures that is a sign of disrespect. It's important to treat people with respect, especially if you're in a public setting. Um, by knowing what to say, or at least knowing how to say things without insulting others. Uh, you need to be able to be sympathetic and understanding of others, and be able to, to think before you say something. How is it important to respect someone in a public setting? Uh -huh. It's very, very important because you don't know whether that person is CEO of a big company looking for potential clients. You don't know if that person is, could offer you a job. You don't know that person is just a really nice guy and just could help you in the future. So it's very, very important to respect others the way you want to be respected. There are some cultural backgrounds such as Mexicans being considered immigrants I believe if I'm at a press conference and we are talking about immigration, it, it would be very respectful if we just spoke about immigration and how it is being held against the people from Mexico as opposed to trying to call somebody a wetback or someone that just comes straight from, from the border. And th these type of terms are what I consider to be very disrespectful. We live in a very fragmented society right now. I think it, it gives a good image of what community should be. And I think really deep inside, that's what everybody's pursuing. But because we have so many different competing views and so many different competing perspectives, we don't quite know how to bring the balance between the universal goal and everybody's specific needs and wants and desires in the world. And so I think when you have, when you're in a public setting and people can sit down and actually engage these issues, it gives other people an image of how to actually create community. Treating people with respect in a public, public setting, excuse me, is extremely important. Um, understanding that someone is made in the likeness and image of God and understanding their humanity is what would compel me to treat them like a brother or sister, treat them like a family member because they belong to the larger human family and the family of Christ. I think that it's always important to treat people with respect. And when it comes to being in a public setting, I think it's even more important just because if there's a crowd of people looking at you, you're being judged by the way you treat other people. It's important to treat people with respect in a public setting because people have different ideas and different views, and respect is one of the ways that we can communicate ideas across with each other in a public setting. I think I respect people who stand up for things or have voices for people who don't have voices for themselves. I can't say there's anybody specific at this very moment that I respect, but I, there's a lot happening right now in our society and I, I respect anybody that has the balls to you know, stand up for it and you know, go to protests and speak their mind. And there's a lot to be fighting for right now and the people that are doing it, I highly respect them. I have a lot of people I admire and respect, um, but since I just read one of his works, uh, Martin Luther King, um, I admire and respect his tenacity um, his ability to command an audience and command uh, groups of people to march toward a cause um, and his ability to speak truth to power. Um, I respect him so much and I, I honor him. As the Dean of the Mathematics Department, I, I interviewed her and she is just a very nice lady. 
She runs all of the math department and the computer science department as well. Anyone who's um, consistently and respectfully putting their their values and their passions and their beliefs out there in a way that um, seeks to benefit the lives in the world um, around them. I think I think that's admirable. But like Viola Davis is a great example of someone using their platform as a way to inform people. I admire Jude Socrates. Um, I admire him because he recently wrote a textbook, which is pretty awesome. He can explain math in a way that uh, we can understand. One person that comes to mind as an example of someone who is uh, good at having these kind of public conversations, I think, uh, is Alice Rivlin. Uh, she's the former director of the Office of Management and Budget, which is a kind of wonky answer, but I've always really admired her uh, ability to run that agency in such a way that it's been completely above partisan politics for, for its entire existence. Dr. Martin Luther King actually captivated me at the age of four. I memorized his entire I Have a Dream speech and recited it at my church because I was so captivated by him. And not just in, in his, his speaking ability and his ability to captivate an entire world, but I feel like he was the only person that really had a chance to bring the world together. Like his ethical framework, his viewpoint and vision of community for the world, I think was something that everybody wanted to kind of jump on with, but he didn't, he didn't stay alive long enough to make that happen. So I respect anyone in the public arena who gives back and contributes back to the community, uh, not just any community, but their community in particular. And within the public arena, I think there are lots of people who um, work and who've really put themselves out there to try to be honest communicators. Uh, I think one good example from our field of scientists uh, is Ernie Moniz, the Secretary of Energy. Uh, he really put himself out there to go from being a scientist to a, a public policy maker and really work on a variety of issues that weren't to begin with his level of expertise, but it's really worked to kind of talk with people and learn about those issues and really engage with them to, to make good decisions. And that really begins with uh, having respect for those people within public policy and the politicians and, and really to try to learn from them and take, bring to the table what you know and then also take what, what those other people at the table know and really try to make good policy. I wish I had an answer for that. Right now I don't think there's anyone in the public that I admire. Um, but I do, I have noticed that a few, I can't pinpoint one person, but from the few people that I've, I've seen in the public eye that I've thought about in a good way are people that usually uh, speak about issues that people don't talk about. Um, so a few, I would say the public figure, Obama, uh, Jennifer Lawrence is one. Um, yeah, but I can't really pinpoint one person. Who I respect and admire in this public arena, I don't actually have a direct person. It would probably be everyone on this planet because we all have different stories. I am inspired by a lot of the stories that I hear, by the people I walk with every day to class or even if I don't even talk to them. What life are they going through is not something I can experience for sure. I can say like I understand, but do I really understand it? I admire the person who's watching right now because you are giving a chance to this world by listening to me. Thank you. In the public arena, I respect my boss, Melva because she's a leader and she stands up for what she believes in and what is right in a respectful way. There's a lot of young people today that want to create change, but they don't necessarily know how to, or sometimes they may not necessarily want to deviate from their everyday schedules. But you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now that we're more aware of because of social media or any of those reasons. But uh, people are, young people are more engaged more than ever. I tutor mathematics, and when I tutor, I'm involved with different ethnic groups. I'm involved with people that really want to strive for success. I, I see that when I start helping them, in, in return, they start helping their friends, and from friends, even their colleagues or coworkers. Community-wise, I don't think many people are too involved. Reason is because of technology. Either people are on their phone, going through social media, or gaming. Um, they're not really involved. They just focus on their own things. I would say it's pretty good. I know a lot of my friends who 
and uh, do volunteer work here around Pasadena. Uh, I know most of my friends go to PHS and they volunteer almost all the time. It's not because they have to, it's really because they want to. I feel like we live in a great generation of millennials who love to speak their mind and love to use their voice as a form of empowerment. I feel like this gen I'm very proud to be a part of this generation because we question a lot of things. We don't just believe everything that people are telling us and we're actually taking action. I think young people, kids my age, the youth, we play a huge role in being involved in um, in community service and things like that. I think that it helps when other kids see people like me and other youth helping out to know that you don't have to be a certain age to start making a difference. Uh, I don't believe a lot of uh, people in my generation are very involved with their community and um, uh, I believe it would be that we can create a better society if more people were involved. One of the things as humans that we're supposed to do is progress as human development, and that's what puts us above, I guess, animals that separates us from a gorilla. Like, we're supposed to constantly progressing. So if we don't put in work today to better tomorrow, then nothing's gonna change. I feel that most people nowadays don't appreciate um, volunteering as much as uh, we do. Um, I, I've been tutoring and talking to young people who just graduated high school and I suggest scholarships and to tell them about themselves to say what they do on a regular basis and they're surprised to see that you have to volunteer or that it's important to volunteer and I, it, it's surprising to see that most people think that it's irrelevant or not important. For every person who it seems like they ignore politics, a young person who seems like they're just fed up with the whole endeavor. I think there are as many young people starting movements, uh, social or, or political, um, but they may not you know, fit the, the same form factor as traditional movements. They may be online, they may be uh, you know, through different forms of media. Doing things for others has always been a big part of my life and I feel like it always will be. And it's important to me because I feel like when I do things like community service, I can express how I feel about my community to others by helping them and not just uh, saying that I like it or that I want to improve something, but actually hands-on making a difference in my community. Community service is a big deal um, for my generation because it really builds um, a relationship with your community and you can really get a scope of everything that's happening. In the end, you always want to be a great positive person and you'll be viewed as a, a person with a good reputation and everybody could, could remember you and look back and say that, oh, I remember her or him and, you know, it's, it's good. Um, in my generation, I don't think that youth are involved or as involved as they should be right now in our city. Um, I think this youth council has helped youth become involved and feel like they have a say and voice in our community. The importance of community service in my life is um, well, getting to know the person and um, like basically like bonding with them. I think that community service really has a huge impact on society. A good community leads to a good society. And if you don't have a good community, you can forget about a good society. And so the people who make the community are a huge basis to the structure of how the city works. The school systems, or at least in the U.S., they are requiring a lot from high school students to do like uh, extracurricular activities, to do volunteer hours, to do community service. And sometimes that, even though it is helping students find their path in life or in a um, exposing them to more items in life is not really allowing people to be passionate about what they want. I do wish that people do more community service or like any involvement in order to help the world because they want to. But I'm also glad for the opportunities that this school system gives us to do mandatory community service because it allows people to really think about the situation they're going through. Well, I think that doing community service is very important because it's helping the community and the people who live in it, and it can really make a difference in somebody else's life. 
I think the involvement of young people today in community service is pretty low. Um, I think we're kind of like a self-driven society. The millennials, all the stereotypes we have are really because everything is for our benefit. And I think a lot of people don't see the benefit in actually investing in what's going on around them. I'd say we are definitely involved in things we care about. I feel the involvement of young people in civic engagement today is there, but I don't always feel like it's as effective. I feel like the current generation is, is coming from the residue of brokenness and lack of trust, lack of trust in authority. And most of the time, I think what most young people want is for people to hear them but they don't quite know or really expect anything to change. Uh, I think we live in a very nihilistic and hopeless generation and we need a, a renewed vision to give them hope so that when they do dialogue is to pursue something greater than just shouting, shouting in the air hoping that something will happen. The community involvement of today's generation, like my generation, I think it's very, very low, like not a lot of people my age really do a lot of volunteer work the youth that live here, we also are experiencing like these problems that are happening and we also have a say, we should have a say in what goes on because we live here too. A lot of the politics that we see on TV, on news channels, are national politics and it's hard for one person, especially my age and my shoes, to make something that looks like a difference at that level. I think there are definitely, however, instances where you can impact local politics if you think, if that's something that you want to engage yourself in. I think there's increasingly a recognition that it's important for us to be civically involved. Lots of our lives has been really affected by decisions that are made by, um, you know, government and, and other institutions. And so we kind of are beginning to seek out how can we get better civically involved. I think it's really important to help others because as we're like in relation to the other question, um, everybody works in society and I believe that if you help others then it will in turn come back to you. From my community service I have learned that when you help people it's such an amazing thing and you get to see a different side of a person and it's so great helping give back to people. I've learned to open up more. Through the community service I've done with the Youth Council, I've learned how to communicate more uh, clearly with people and uh, get ideas across and learn how to organize events and uh, I guess direct people. So even though there's a lot of these broken things that there's things we can do to make a small fix in someone's life, we might, we might not be able to stop a war but Giving someone food on a holiday or Thanksgiving can really change someone's life. I feel like I've learned how to use God's gift uh, to others as a good steward of God. I'm a member of the Science and Engineering Policy uh, at Caltech organization. Uh, we're a group of students that meets regularly to talk about issues of politics and science and their intersection. And, uh, and that group, you know, while we may be small and meet you know, only once a, every week or so, uh, having those conversations and, and taking you know, that small time out of the week to share ideas with peers and with visitors uh, really helps inform everyone um, about relevant issues and perspectives they might not have had. One area in which this becomes hard, at least for me personally, is doing things with groups who are advocacy groups or activism groups because a lot of these groups by nature tend to be one-dimensional. They tend to have one thought that they're going for and it's a very simple thought and as a scientist nothing is ever one-dimensional. Nothing is ever as simple as any advocacy group or any activist group says it is. Increasingly decisions are made that affect all of our lives um, by large institutions and unfortunately lots of people have chosen to kind of be distrustful and and not engage with those large institutions like within politics. Um, but they're the ones who really make the decisions that affect us. And therefore, I think it's really important that we get involved and, and work in making those decisions and bringing to that discussion what we know and, and what affects us.
People are going to act the way they're going to act. Can't really change that, and I try not to let that bug me. You know, um, no, I, I guess you just have to respect people for, you know, if they act out of line, then put them in their place. I do like that the communication is actually happening, whether it be from any ethnic background. Uh, before, I'm sure there was social restrictions in which certain ideas were not being able to be uh, conversated and people probably felt like it was a threat to their own life if they spoke about anything that threatened them, such as Mexicans being afraid of speaking out that they're, that they're immigrants because they think that they're going to get uh, uh, deported back to Mexico. There are a lot of things that I dislike about how people speak to each other. Um, I do not think people are polite. I think some people uh, do not listen. They listen for a response, to respond, but they do not listen to actually hear a person, um, their perspective, their lens, and where they're coming from. People seek to be right, um, or people seek to have their voice be the loudest. And I think that sometimes in attempts to do that, it silences the narrative of the people around them, and that's not productive. It always bothers me when I see moms yelling at their kids in public. Um, I think what people do in public is really indicative of what they do in private, uh, even more so. So when I see people yelling at each other or fighting, um, it makes me think about what happens behind closed doors. In public, I dislike how people interrupt each other. I like how uh, I like when people are polite to each other and patient. I guess what I dislike is the fact that no one is actually listening to the... Respect everyone. It's better to show some respect to people. Just be a decent human being. Be more considerate of the people you see around you. Think a little more before you act. Mean what you say, say what you mean. Sometimes they're not very respectful to one another. Like, when it comes to like their own opinion, they think that they're right and they don't... They don't really validate the other person's opinion. There's a sense that I have to defend my own particular perspective and worldview and narrative, and not at least try to engage to see where, where are there distortions and where there are blind spots in my own perspective. I think, like I said, in a fragmented world, we need dialogue. Because, I mean, I feel like modernism has, frag has broken the world Postmodernism has further fragmented the world, and that's not to say that these things haven't created good things in our world. Um, but I feel like because the world is so fragmented, in order to piece everything back together, we need dialogue. And if we can't come to the table with the respect of, of the other person's point of view and perspective and world view, then we won't ever be able to kind of put the pieces together. I consider myself to be a voice for people from the margins. Um, the margins of society, or the margins of the community who are overlooked. So if my voice was able to speak in unison with their voices and Pasadena paid attention, I would be elated and I would hope that my voice would not be misconstrued and I would hope that the voice of the people that I'm representing will not be, not be misconstrued. It's an honor um, to have my ideas and thoughts be a part of the city of Pasadena's priorities, I think. Um, together one small voice can get louder um, and so I think it's an opportunity for um, us together in, in higher education and as a community um, to speak about things that matter such as civil engagement and um, creating safe spaces and resources for people to get involved um, and make positive impacts in, in our city. Most people don't really care what anyone has to say especially in politics today like the people who are actually living in the communities don't really get heard so it's cool that people are being asked about what they actually think who are in those places. My thoughts being considered by the city of Pasadena would be that Pasadena can begin to cultivate more dialogue within community, but hopefully seeking a collective vision that takes into account different people's perspective needs and wants. Um, there are a lot of things. I mean, I'm, I've been here for only a year and I see so many things that, are, that, that is needed in the city of Pasadena. Um, and because there are so many things that are needed, it could be hard to, to, to kind of combat all the things at once. So that I hope that Pasadena can create more forums, more opportunities, more dialogue, more discussion, more civil engagement. Um, 
and even setting the boundaries to make sure that people are coming to the table as a community and not simply as individual groups of individuals. It makes me feel happy that my, my thoughts are being considered. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just the fact that uh, the exchange of ideas and stuff like that, I, I, I'm for it. So it makes me feel happy. I plan on being as much involved in my community as I can, mostly because I created something at this school called ArtReach that has gained a lot of interest and traction from other students who have inspired me to continue doing it. On my own, it was something that I just wanted to see if I could make create change in positive ways, but when other students saw what I was doing, they were asking, how can I help? How can I be more involved in, in nonprofits? What, what can I do to make a difference? And suddenly I had to start figuring out, you know, what nonprofits can I reach out to? And when there was all these students coming to me, it motivated me. And as I mentioned earlier, coming back from my Safe Ninos trip in, in Chile, I wanted to create more change. And this, this is the perfect time to do so. I'm running programs with three nonprofits right now, and um, it's hard to, to back away from it once you've started social, social impact because you're not you're not designing shiny things. You're designing for people, and you're not even really designing. You're solving problems using a creative lens that you know is different than another person would. I think for that reason more designers need to step into the role of social impact because we approach things a totally different way. We brainstorm a different way. We use post-its a different way. Um, so I'll continue as long as I can. I have to pay my bills too, but you know, it's a huge passion of mine. When you go and you change people's mindsets, that's the most powerful thing you can do is to encourage people to get up and to make a change or to, to realize how society has affected the way that their minds think and if you can help help become more of a conscious thinker when you go into communities, specifically in my experience, lower income communities where they don't know their power, they don't know how to go about how to go about the system. I feel like when you go directly into those communities and you create an impact and you show them that, hey, there's an alternative lifestyle, I feel like that's the most powerful thing you can do.